Happy birthday, Mrs. Hawkins, ma'am. Younger every year. Oh, none of your frippery, John Harrell. But music and friends do make you feel... Where's Jim? He's in the kitchen, I think. Just put a head on that one, John. Oh, you made that cake? No, I didn't, and I'll thank you not to say I did. Jim Hawkins made a cake! <laughs> Jim Hawkins made a cake! No, I didn't. Only girls make cakes. My mother made this cake herself. So she had to have a cake for her birthday. Jim Hawkins got the cake! <laughs> Jim Hawkins got the cake! Stop <laughs> following me around. Upon my soul. Why, Jim, you didn't go and bake it. Hey, here's the cake you made, Mother. I trust it's good. It's the best cake ever. I raise the mug to Jim Hawkins, proprietor of the Admiral Van Boat. Hey, Jim, please, please, come on, get up. Please, sir, please. <laughs> well, I don't know what to say, but... Ever since father died, and with mother having to do all the work, I'm truly glad each time she gets older. Huh? I mean, then I get older, too. <laughs> and soon I'll be able to do all the work and won't have to make speeches. <laughs> <laughs> Fine jump like a porpoise it does. So what might your name be? J Jim Hawkins. Well, now look here, Jim. You and me is going to be mates. You'll get a silver fourpenny bit every month if you watches out for strangers and comes and lets the old captain know when they tops the horizon. Well, what manner of strangers? Seafaring men. Well. All seafaring men? No, 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 son. There's a special cut of the jib to these seafaring men. But most especially, I want you to keep your eye open for a seafaring man with one leg. A seafaring man with one leg? Aye. Upon my word, sir, what shall I tell them? What do they want? Yeah, never you mind what they want. You go on down below and get me a noggin of rum. A double noggin, Jim, because I'm becalmed. 
Be calmed on a sea of troubles, and I got to fill my sails again. Yes, sir. Who is it, Jim? What did he say? I don't know. Something about seafaring men with no ears and no legs and no... Hey, drop anchor, matey. We'll fill the cast where you lie. Rum for all hands, say I. Here's a new port, all full of pretty wenches and strong young buckos. Clear the decks for pleasant action. <laughs> Fill a pretty belly with grog, and that's what makes the world spin on its poles, say I. <laughs> hey, Billy, the rum. I'm not much on strong liquor, sir. Besides, we have to go now. It's getting... Go, out. say you? You'll stay. You'll stay. Sit yourselves down on your binnacles. Jim made the rum. Uh, I ain't like all seafaring men. Genteel I am and a dove at heart, mates. Why, I know some seafaring men. Them has boarded a Spanish brig all loaded down with Castilian dons and their beauteous ladies. And what did they do? Genteel like me, you thinks? No. They slices them dons like bread loaves and feeds them to the sharks. And what do they do to the beauteous ladies? Why, after cotton of their favor, as it were, saving your presence, matey, they slits the veins of their pearly white arms and uses their blue blood to warm their rum. Oh. And then what do they do, matey? Bless my soul, sir. What else was left? There was the song, Jim. Singing by all hands. Fifteen men on a dead man's chest. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Now oh, come on, we'll all tip the stage. Come on! Fifteen men on a dead man's chest. instant. I promise on my honor that you shall hang at the next assizes. Right. Furthermore, sir, I'm not only a doctor, I'm magistrate here. And if I catch another breath of complaint against you, if only for a piece of incivility like this, I'll have you routed out of here. Let that suffice. I ask you patience, sir. 
Just a squall from a poor old sailor man who took too much rum over his bowsprit. I ask your pardon. It would have been nice coffee. And don't worry, Mrs. Hawkins, don't worry. Goodbye. Yes, come on. Praise be, Jim, the man was only full of talk. But bless my soul, sir. He certainly came to sing. for my mate, Bill. I... I don't know your mate, Bill. But don't Bill live here? No. Nobody but the captain. Oh, captain it is. Well, Truly, sir. Good. I can... Ah. Oh, oh, oh. Here comes my old mate, Bill, now. Bless his heart, to be sure. Jim, lad. The rum. I'm becalmed again. Come, Bill. You know me. You know an old shipmate, surely. Black dog. Black dog as ever was. Come for to see his old shipmate, Billy. Well, speak up. A porter, Sonny. Porter. Well. I've been after you now. No, by the power of it into it. If it comes to swinging, swing one, swing all. Now, touch a jaggy wind, you. Next time, I'll sever your gullet. Humor him, Jim. I'll be back shortly. Where are you going? To Mr. Doolittle's. I'm going to get him to ride to Dr. Livesey so he and his constables can come and get that man out of here at once. Rum, Jim. Rum. Are you hurt? i got to get away from here, Jim. i got to slip my horses. Captain, you've been drinking too much. Remember, the doctor said... Ah, doctors is all swabs. I've lived on rum, I tell you. It's been meat and drink to me. Man and wife, and I needs rum now, Jim. Mother locked up all the rum. She said it. Oh, I gotta have it, Jim. I gotta have it. Look, see how my fingers fidges. I can't stop it, Jim. I gotta have a drain of rum. If I don't, I'll have the horrors. And then I'll see Flint there behind you in the corner, just as plain as print. Well, is Flint the one-legged man? No, no, but he'll be there, too. Both of them will be there if you don't get me the rum. Oh, go on, quick, before they come in and slips me the black spot. Well, what's the black spot? It's a summons, Jim, a summons. Do they want to kill you? No, no, it's my sea chest they're after. What's in the sea chest? Pieces of eight. Pearls as big as ostrich eggs, all the gold your art can desire, and just for a little noggin of rum, Jim. Would a half a noggin do? Ha <laughs> ha! That's my meeting. There we go, lad. Wait here, I'll see. Uh. <laughs> kind friend and former poor blind man who has lost the precious sight of his eyes in the gracious defense of his native country, England. And God bless King George. Where well, in whatever part of this country he may now be. You were at the Admiral Benbow, Black Hill Cove, sir. Ah, I hear a voice. 
A young voice. Will you not take my hand, my kind young friend, and lead me in? S certainly, sir. I, I... Now, boy, take me to the captain. Well, no, sir. Upon my word, I dare not. Take me in straight or I'll break your arm. Oh, oh it is for yourself, I mean. He has his cutlass. Another gentleman... Come now, march. Yes, sir. Aye, Bill. Your old friend, Pew. Now sit where you are, Bill. A gentleman they like. I can't see, but I can hear even a finger stirring. Business is business. Now right up to him. Aye, Bill. Now, boy, take his hand and bring it close to mine. There! That's done! That's done! We'll do them yet! Not a tableau! I fought and bled for it. It's mine. Every farthing of it. It's mine. I'll swing on execution dock. Jim, what happened? Dad, you have till ten tonight. They'll be back again, too. Who will be? The men that wanted to kill the captain. They want all the treasure in his chest upstairs. Let's get out of here. No, Mother. The captain owes us money. We'll go get what he owes us first. They can't take that. Jim, I'm so frightened. I'll see no harm comes to you, Mother. I'm not afraid. We shouldn't, Jim. There'd Come be... on, Mother. Gee, he says there's gold and silver and, and, and pearls as big as ostrich eggs. But we'll show them we're honest. We'll take what is our due and not a farthing over. Why, well, there's nothing there at all. There's some coins, though. Open the door! I know it's it! Hear something! I'll take what I have. Up! Down with it! In! 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 Neil's dead! Well, searching for me, a brash brain lover! Someone's turned out the chest and over the law. Is it there? Just some money. Ah, money, you squid. Prince Fisk, Prince Fisk, you below. Is it on bill? <laughs> it's that wild, sneaking brat. I should have torn his arm off. I should have put his eyes out. Scatter and find them. Right after butt, mate. What? Give him the whip. Hey, Johnny, black dog, Wallace. You wouldn't leave all of you, would you, mate? After the boys. Go to the pickets. Jim. Jim. Mrs. Hawkins. Here we are, Dr. Livesey. Here we are. Oh, dearie me, dearie me. 
Who were they? Some men, they wanted to kill the captain, but he dropped there just like you said he would. Well, what did they say? Well, 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 they wanted something up in his chest upstairs. Flint's fist or something, I don't know. This is all I took. You suppose that could be anything? Flint's fist? Well, there's only one Flint. I know that. Why, it's only a man. What are those funny red crosses there? Bulk of treasure. Bless my... Quickly, into the coach, both of you. Reigns, back here at once. Well, where are we going, Doctor? Esquire Trelawney's. Jim, my boy, you may have stumbled on the secret of the century. It's it, it's it, I tell you, do you hear me? Esquire Trelawney, are you sure? Sure? The, the actual chart of, of Flint's treasure, the very island it's buried on, latitude, longitude. Jim, Jim, now look here. The very blockhouse and stockade where the infamous pirate held off attack. Squire, you get so confoundedly overheated. What do you propose to do? Why, bless me for a fat mole, we'll, we'll dig it up. Won't we, Jim? Won't we, young Hawkins? I have my own shovel, sir. Shovel, shovel. You'll have more than that. You'll be the richest lad in England, in the whole world. But, Squire, a moment now. We'll need a ship. We'll need a crew. Tomorrow I leave for Bristol. In two weeks from today, I'll have the finest ship and the choicest crew in England. Those cutthroats who attacked tonight have shown us that they'll stop at nothing to get this chart. Others too, perhaps. We must proceed with absolute secrecy. Exactly, sir. Exactly. Sphinx is all. Do you hear that, Jim? Sphinx is. Sphinx is all. There's just one man I'm afraid of. And who's that, sir? Who's that? Name the dog. You, sir. Or you cannot hold your tongue. I? I? Why, doctor? Blast me, I... Livesey, you're... You're always in the right of it. I'll be as silent as the grave. Was you aiming to blow the other leg off? I, I don't think it's loaded. Well, you ought to be certain. Now, you, you be the captain of that ship now, be not you? Well, I... Come on, Jim, I'll, I'll show you to you. He wants to know if I was captain. My captain, my man, is on his way from Dover. Is there anything I can do? No, thank you, sir. Just an old sailor hobbled down to get a smell of the salt air and and cast his eyes on a trim craft, the likes of which you sure have got here. <laughs> yes, I think I, I think I have a good eye for a, for a ship. Do you mind if I, I, I just come aboard, please? Just for a spell. <coughs> yes, you're, you're welcome, my man, of, of course. Squire, sir. This way. Squire. This way, my friend. Any assistance? Well, well. Silver's the name. Long John Silver, they calls me. At your service, sir. Mr. Silver, sir. Trelawney's my name. Squire Trelawney. And this is our cabin boy, Jim, Jim Hawkins. Hi, matey. Smart as paint I'll warn, huh? Smart enough to see you've only one leg, sir. Jim boy. Yes. You're pretty smart, Jim. So was that French gunner who touched off the ball that Blew that old leg of mine overboard. You served in, in the Navy, my man? Aye, aye, sir, under Admiral Hawk off Frisky. Under the immortal Hawk? Aye, aye, sir. Are there many one-legged seafaring men? Uh, why, the, the country's full of them, matey. Just like storks on a roof. Truly, Mr. Silver, I'm sorry for my bluntness. Here, matey, you, you try this out. Of 
course you realize we can only sign on able-bodied men. Oh, bless me, sir. I didn't think when I came hobbling down here that you'd have any use for this timber leg in me. Oh, no, no. <coughs> oh. <coughs> now, you don't uh, happen to have a cook on board, do you? Cook? Why, why no, not yet. Well, squire. I own a little sailor's tavern up here, and I can make salt pork taste just like roast pheasant. Why, damn it, Silver, if you, if you want the berf, you're hereby made ship's cook. Oh, Silver, this port is full of the most unreliable men. Of the dozen or so that uh, I signed on, eight have never come back, disappeared entirely. Oh, no. Now, ain't that a shame? I wonder what could have happened to them. Shiftless idiots! How many men might you be needing, Squire? I should like a, a round score of stout fellows in case of savages or, or, or buccaneers. Oh, now, now you, you'd be scared of pirates, huh? <laughs> well, Silver, one, one never knows. Not presuming, sir, but uh, I know every able-bodied seafaring man in the town of Bristol. What say you that I fetch a flock of them right down here to you? Fetch them down, fetch them down, Silver. Why, strike, strike me, pink. We may get Smollett's entire crew for him and, and, and be able to sail sooner. Aye. Eh, Jim? <laughs> aye, 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 sir. With your eye for seamen, sir. Here, matey. There you are. <laughs> Oh, sir, me and that old Mr. Silver. Oh, Jim, oh I... no, 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 there's, there's lot to be done. Oh, but take... oh, oh so now, please. take the boy along, Silver, take him along, show him the port, the ships, start his, start his education for him. All right, come on, matey, come on. Please. That's the way it be, matey, that's the way it be. Well, then you surely would have been a captain if you hadn't lost your leg. Oh, yes, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Oh, oh, yes. I'd be captain. I'd be captain, matey. Here. Help yourself to a, a bosun's pipe. Oh. Here you are, here. Let me show you how to blow it. Oh, thank you, Mr. Silk. Now you blow it. That's that little light! Gather ye rose, but while ye may, old time is still. This is my little end, Jim, as I keep for sailors as ain't appreciated. And the same flower that smiles. Ladies! This is Jim Hawkins, ship's boy off the Hispaniola. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, hey, lad. You might be glad to know that I've been made ship's cook. <laughs> Just friends, Jim, all happy to know that old John's going to get his health back. <coughs> they wouldn't be needing any other hands, would they, John? Them as is worthy, George. I've just been yarning with the ship's owner. Maybe I can convince him of your high qualities, them as has them. Oh, That's the kind of talk I'm doing! Now, this here is Dandy Dawson. A gentleman is Dandy. Took to the sea for the love of it, he says. Wouldn't harm a cockroach. Your servant, Sonny. My pleasure, Mr. Dawson. And uh, this is William O'Brien. Now, William is a lay reader in the churches, William. Lost his ear defending a woman, a maid in Santiago that he had taken unto his heart, as it were. As it were, sonny. Bless my soul. And matey, this is Israel Hands. Ugly Israel, we calls him. But as honest a man as you'll find in the room, Jim. My pleasure, Mr. Hands. You come in a fair breeze, Master Hawkins. <laughs> Where's John? Stop him! Stop him! 
Alongside the likes of that, why I'll a scurvy pirate in my inn. <laughs> you wait here, matey. I'll run and get me sea bag and me bird, and we'll go right up and tell the squire about this. Blimey, pirates! Those are pretty boots, Master Hawkins. Yes, my mother gave them to me before I left. And the same size our foot is, alike as two sister craft. Yes. Yeah, I'm fond of pretty things, I am. Yes. Oh, Paris! Yes, matey. If any of you wants a voyage, you go right down to the Hispaniola. She's lying in Wolf's Wharf. No, Jim, a girl, and usually a well-mannered little wench. Pieces of eight! Pieces of eight! Pieces of eight! Pieces of eight! Ah! Upon my word, she's a good talker. Well, I wouldn't say good, Jim, but powerful. What's her name? Captain Flint, I calls her. Here, matey, you take her for a spell. She likes you, Jim. But does she bite? No, no, nary a nibble. I thought most parents like to bite. Not this one. She's a lovebird, matey. You know, I've been thinking about the squire, matey. Yes, Mr. Silver. You just call me Long John. Yes. You know, I yes. don't think that we ought to tell him about that black dog now, do you? Why not? Well, the squire's very excitable, and he's got a lot on his mind now, ain't he? Oh, yes. Well, now, we didn't catch Black Dog, and there's nothing can be done about it, is there? Well, I know, but... Well, now, now there, there's Admiral Hawk. I remember in a battle off of Lisbon, why a young lieutenant tells him something without using his judgment, and you know what happened? Why, that Admiral fell in a fit and pink foam oozed out of his ears for 42 days. Out of his... all that time? Yes, sirree. Just like two spigots out of a barrel of ale. So, just for the peace of the mind of the squire, why, we won't tell him, huh? I believe you're right, Lord. Ah, uh, maybe you're... you're just smart as paint. Why, you and me's gonna get along just fine in my galley. Ow! Now, ain't that too bad? Well, matey, I guess she ain't used to you. She's she's a little bit jealous. Yeah, I guess you don't want to leave old Long John alone, do you? Ah! Ah! Ooh! Ah! You. Just a little kiss, matey. Yes. You clam brain. <laughs> A good crew, Jim. You know, if this voyage were a rainbow and there was a pot of gold at the other end, they couldn't be any happier. I'm glad you like Dr. Lipsy. Now, he's a pretty smart man, Jim. He's not a sailor, of course, but he can cut you open and sew you up again. Now, that sewing up must be pretty difficult. So's the cutting up part. Uh, well, experience, Jim. I couldn't do it. Oh, no, neither could I. Mm. I'd swoon like a lady of quality, I would. I guess I'm kind of sensitive, like, to the squire with my compliments, Jim. Silver forgets nothing. 
nothing. Long of me, he's going to be certain that this is a voyage that, that we shall all remember. Long John's a wonderful man, sir. <laughs> Lindsay, I give you... Yes, 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 yes. Ha-ha! Captain Smollett. Oh, well, I trust everything's ship-shape and, and seaworthy. I may as well speak plain, gentlemen, at the risk of offence. I don't like this voyage. That's short and sweet. Pray explain yourself, sir. I was signed on under sealed orders to sail this ship wherever you should bid me. But I've about arrived at the conclusion that every hand before the mast knows more about the voyage than I do. I don't call that fair. Do you? Certainly not. What do the men know? That we're going after treasure. But, my do Oh, mind you, I've heard it whispered on all sides. So is my officer, Mr. Arrow. Livesey, I never uttered a word. It must have been either you or, 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 or the boy here. Oh, upon my word, sir, I never... Mm -hmm. So, treasure it is, I see. You mean you don't... Trust the crew? Oh, some of them may be honest. British naval heroes, all of them. Yes, and when there's treasure in the hold, there's fire in the forecastle. So I'm taking certain precautions before we sail. And by your leave, I'd ask you gentlemen to help me. Lay forward on the quarterdeck. Two inches off those points, bosun. Aye, aye, Captain. Captain, sir, what are we to make of this? Why, me and Dick and Alan? I never had my knife broke a four, Captain. It's a habit of mine on long voyages. Sometimes hands get restless. Captain's right, Jim. Honest hands never object to having their knives tipped. Bosun, take the larboard watch. Have all the powder moved out of this four hole back in under the after cabin. Aye, sir, larboard watch. Bring me out to the four hole. Uh, Captain, uh, that means that I'll have to move all my provision. I stored them half specially so the vegetables wouldn't get milled. My orders, man. You get to your galley. The hands will want the dinner. Aye, aye, Captain. Well, why do you men stand here? Do what you're told. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, no sign of arms, sir. You gentlemen are determined to make this cruise, I take it? Like I am, sir. Weigh anchor, Mr. Arrow. Aye, aye, sir. Now, here, matey. What's to do? Oh, the captain ordered us to move our bunks aft. With the gentleman, huh? <laughs> That's fine, Jim. Oh, but I'd rather be forward with you. Well, how's this? Supposing I ask the captain to change bunks with me, that is, after we settles down the sail. <laughs> <laughs> Here you, ship's boy, get along with that. I'll have no favorites aboard my ship. One honest man aboard, it's Captain Smollett. Honest, if you will, but an intolerable humbug. I consider his conduct unmanly, unsailorly, and, and downright un-English, sir. Bless my soul! Why does the captain have to bellow at me? Captain's ways, Jim, captain's ways. Now, now I wonder what could have thrown the captain into such a sudden squall, matey. Oh, well, he wanted to... I don't know. I wish you were the captain of this ship, Long John. I wish you could handle this boat better than he could. No, matey, the captain's a man of wisdom. A lot of brains. Too bad an uneducated seaman can't open his head and see just what he's got in it. We're moving! Yay! Well, well, Mr. Arrow. She's breaking clear. All the head yards are out. Set the jibs.
swayed and the sails they are set. Goodbye, fare you well, goodbye, fare you well. The girls we are leaving we'll never forget. Ye boys were homeward bound. Ah, Billy, that canary piping and tip us a man, Steve. Long John likes it. And I likes rum, I does. Law for a mouthful. Be the seven rum aft. Squire well, likes his spirits of an evening. And he likes Valentian lace around his throat, he does. I'm partial to Valentian lace myself. A tender spot, the throat. Starboard a bit, matey. She's laughing. <laughs> she almost got away from me that time. I was looking at old Nicodemus. Ah, he follows us until he gets what he's after. Well, we've given him plenty of potato peelings. Ah, that won't do for old Nicodemus. He's used to following slave ships. Bless me. The ocean's full of death, but it's cured your lungs, hasn't it, Long John? Lungs, matey? Yes. You've not coughed in a long time. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. They're much better. More ship shape now. What are you going to do after this voyage? Oh, I'll go back to that little roof, I reckon. Well, would you like to come and live with me? With you, matey? Yes. You see, I'll have a lot more money if... Well, I mean, there's only mother and me. And we've a nice room with a sea view and, and sea air coming in from three sides. And you could always be... Oh, oh no. No, matey, I, I, I couldn't. I... I just... Well, anyhow, you can come and visit us. We'll always be mates, won't we? Certain we will. Certain we will. No, matey. Never spit to windward. It'll live back on you. Always spit to the lure. It sails like a gull. That's right, matey. Look, Mr. Arrow's drunk again. Hmm. The captain's got the key to the grog, Jim. Where'd you get it? Just see. See. Sick, you're drunk. Why, sir, I haven't had a drink. You're but... drunk. If it occurs again, you lie in the brig. Where'd you get the rum? Why, sir, I haven't had a drink. You get below before I cane you. Here are you two. Silver, what are you doing here in the poop? Boson, take yes. this wheel. Aye, aye. Captain, for the lad's sake, Mr. Arrow says... The blazes is with Mr. Arrow. You get forward where you belong. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, sir. Ah! Good morning, Mr. Arrow, sir. How's for a cup of tea this morning? A powerful lover of tea you are, Mr. Arrow. Yet I hope I'm the one that serves you your last cup, sir. Nowhere off, sir. He ain't in the forecastle. Poor Mr. Arrow. And he stopped by me galley only last night, sir, for a breath of fresh air. Still drunk, you say? His weakness was still upon him, sir. Old Nicodemus isn't with us anymore. Arrow must have lurched overboard. That settles it. I'm sorry, sir. This will leave you short-handed, Captain. I'll have it ended in the log. That's all, men. So why should I join? Join up with what? But Henry, looking. Stern of me, you little runt. I don't like you and others of your kind who come aboard this ship. William, Henry doesn't seem happy aboard this ship. Fall, Henry. I'll be right here below you. Oh, look. Is that another shot? Oh, 
Oh, no. That's a porpoise. That's a seaman's friend. Look, there's a whole school of them. They, they wouldn't eat anybody. Oh, no, matey. Porpoises off the bow is a good sign. A successful voyage, they say. Why, they comes right out from port and escorts you right in. I guess nobody knows where we're heading to but the porpoises and the squire. I'll wager. Brian, you were aloft with him. How did it happen? I, I don't know, sir. I, a bit choked up, I'd be, sir. He, Henry was my friend. He swooned like and fell like a plummet. Poor Henry. Leastwise, he'll never know what struck him. I'm thankful for that. Morrison? All right, sir. Prepare this body for burial. Prepare the body for burial. Let ho! Let ho! Where am I? Cloud there. Bless my soul. Uh, bless everybody's soul, lady. It's it. Can't suit slips if it doesn't hurt. Seems on the side of a hill. Oh, rotten to the core. Jim, run out to the apple barrel and fetch us a good one, will you? My pleasure, sir. Tomorrow lives it. Tomorrow we land at dawn and we'll have the doubloons by sundown. Smartest paint to join up, Dick. Aye, Dick, listen, the minute he heard there was treasure. Don't you know the exact spot it's buried? Now you're here. Flint saw to that. He left his ship in the same place as we we're anchored. He took the treasure and six brave lads and went ashore. And when he came back, he came back alone. Dead men don't bite nor tell no tales, says he. Well, I'm with you. How about the others? Oh, you mean Gray and Allen and... They be stupid souls. Now, we'll talk to them. Now, looky, John, now we're here. How long are we going to stand off and on like a blessed bum boat? When do we strike, John? The last minute that I can manage, that's when. We could all steer a course for whom, but who's to set one? Captain Smollett's a good navigator. He will. He takes the map, gets the treasure, brings it aboard. Captain Smollett takes us out into the trade winds. And then one day, they all disappear overboard. The result of a very heavy storm at sea. <laughs> like Flint, you be, John. And the flower of the flock was Flint. Hey, Dick, you're a nice lad. Get me an apple out of that barrel to sweeten my pipe with, will you? Silver, silver, silver. George Merry and the others is breaking out arms. Now, I told him he was against it. Why, the fools! This molasses is sweeter than silver said it would be. Ephraim, look, see if that box of prunes don't turn into powder and ball. Who smuggled these arms aboard this ship? I did. I'll tell you when to break them out. And that's the whole awful story, sir. Wish I'd only dreamt it. There's your light-hearted crew for you. Captain Smollett, I own myself an utter ass. I wait your orders. What beats me is how they've been held in check so remarkably. With your permission, Captain, that's Silver, a very remarkable man. Yes, he looked remarkably well swinging from a yard arm, sir. Easy, Jim. Steady, boy. You may have been the means of saving a lot of us. Don't flounder now. 
I'm not afraid. Let's see. There are seven of us, including young Hawkins here. We were nine. What's the first move? You... Silver's very anxious to conceal everything and hold on. I am anxious to give him the chance. So we'll send the crew ashore alone. And it's my idea they'll be glad to go. They think they'll bark their shins on the treasure. If they all go, we up anchor and run with the ship. If none go, we'll try and hold this cabin. And God defend the right. Redworth, you load and distribute those muskets. If only a few go ashore, you mark my words, Silver bring them back, as mild as lambs. Come and get your sidearms, gentlemen. Come on, Jim. You could spy out a lot more for us. Exactly, boy. They trust you. Why, you and Silver be great friends. I know. Well, we were mates, and we were going to hunt goats together. I even asked him to live with me. He was the best friend I knew. He gave me... I never knew anybody like him before. But I know him now. Huh. Certain I do. Stay up. Sure, mates. Come off, lads. Silver has left six men. One of them might be honest. Yes, sir. I I thought it was part of the plan, sir. Gentlemen, this is bad business. Telling me, John Silver. I'll not listen to the likes of that. I'll be off. I don't want my rigging fouled with mutiny. I'm an honest seaman, do you hear? Yeah, I laid at that. But, Tom, you're smart as paint. Why, I knew that the minute I clapped eyes on you. You ain't going to let honesty stand in the way of being smart, are you? Oh! <laughs> in heaven's name, what was that? That? I reckon that be Alan. So you killed Alan, have you? Well, rest his soul for a true seaman. But kill me if you can. I defy you. That's two. Not Jim. They wouldn't do. They'll do anything now. Our only chance is to... Stay below there, you men! Get back in that hole! Get it! Get it! We've got to abandon ship. Load the jolly boat with all the provisions and powder she'll carry. You men get that bundle of water and get it over to that door! Come on! Why abandon ship? Because they've shown their hand. When they come back, they'll come back to board us. They've killed two men already. We're next. Can't we hold them off? 
With these swine at our backs, if we tried to hold that aft cabin, they'd fire the ship. We've got to get ashore to Flint's blockhouse. If that stockade is still standing, we can at least make a fight of it. Gray! Abraham Gray! We're about to leave this ship. I think you're an honest man. If you want to do your duty, come out and follow me. I'm with you, sir. Good man. Lay aft and help with the boat. Aye, aye, sir. Don't shoot. Who are you? I am Ben Gunn. I'm poor old Ben Gunn. And I haven't spoken to a Christian these three years. Three years? Were you shipwrecked? Nay, mate. Marooned. Marooned three years ago. And I lived on oysters and berries and goats. Oh, my, my heart's sore. For Christian diet. You mind to happen to have a piece of cheese about you now? No, no says you. Well, says I. Many, many long night I, I dreamed the cheese. It's toasted mostly. Then I wake up again and here I was. Well, if I ever get aboard again, you shall have some. Well, now, what's the hint of you getting aboard now? Well, Tain't old Flint's ship, be it? Oh, no. Flint's dead. With most of his hands were aboard her. Worse luck for us. Not a one-legged man. You mean silver? If you were sent by Long John, I am just the same as pork and know it. But who were the rest you spoke about, matey? Well, there's Dr. Livesey and Squire Trelawney and the captain. <laughs> Squires and doctors, says you. Gentlemen born, says I. That's different. They showed themselves ashore yet? No! Lively, Doctor, lively. This is the last trip. So, after I was on Flint's ship, I was on another ship. That was three years back. And we spied this island. Lad, says I, there's where old Flint's treasure's buried. Let's, let's land and find it. Twelve days we hunt. Every day they have worse words for me. Till one fine morning, all hands got aboard. As for you. Benjamin Gunn says, eh? You're, you're so sure Flint's treasure's buried here? You can just stay and find it, says he. Now, was that a gentlemanly thing to do, says you? Well, did you find it? <laughs> That's what your squires and doctors would like to know, says I. Yes, yeah, says you. Now get behind that rock, Jim. It's my little skin boat and paddle. As I made it with my own hands. He takes it, paddles out, finds the squire and tells him that Ben Gunn puts each side more confidence, each side, mind you, than gentlemen born, than gentlemen of fortune, and then you nips him on the cheek, <coughs> like I does you. Why? And then you tells him that Ben Gunn will meet him on this hill. He's to come along with a white thing in his hand. Upon my word, I don't know what you're talking about, but but I'll tell the squire and doctor everything that you said. They be they begun to fight. Who's the best shot here? Mr. Tavani, out in the wing. Pick me off on those pirates, if you please, sir. Uh, move softly, move softly. Come that ball. Thank you. 
the stockade. Come on, lads. Head them off. Belay that. Belay that, you swabs. They'll shoot you down like a lot of gulls. Get in those gigs and get back to that ship. Come on, lads. Come on, lads. That's the way to waste powder. The flag evidently spots the house for them. Hadn't we better lower it? Lower the flag? Strike my colors? Not I, sir. We've little provisions, but we've plenty of powder and ball. And by heaven, sir, this spot is England. This may be a trick. Doctor, take charge of your watch. Great. Good. Well, what do you want with your flag of truce? Captain Silver, sir, wants to come aboard to make terms. Captain Silver? Who's he? I never heard of him. Me, sir. Me. The poor lads have chosen me their captain since your desertion, sir. What's your course, Silver? One minute's talk with you. I have no desire to talk with you. If you want to come over here, come. But if there's any treachery, it'll be on your side, and the Lord help you. That word from you is enough, sir. I know the gentleman when I lays eyes on him. You can lay to that. Joyce, take the doctor's place. Well, well, well. Here we are all together again, just like one big happy family. Top the morning to you, Jim. I'd rather you'd sit down, Silver. Sit down and toss away that crutch if you're talking to me. Come, come, out of the man. What do you want? We want the treasure. We're going to have it. You want your lives, that's yours. Well, you can... Have that if you give us Flint's chart. I'd see you and the whole island blown to blazes first. Well, that, that's an idea. You give me the chart, and the moment the treasure's on board, we'll take you along with it. And I'll give you my affidavit upon my word and honor that we'll set you down safe and sound at the first point of civilization. That's on your word of honor. My affidavit, gentlemen. And a handsomer one you couldn't hope to look at. Is that all? Every last word by thunder. Good. Now you hear me. You come back here one by one, unarmed, and I'll guarantee to put you in irons, take you back to England, see if you get a fair trial. If you refuse, my name is Alexander Smollett. I've flown my sovereign's colors. And I'll see you all to Davy Jones. That final? That's the last good word you'll hear out of me, by heaven. The next time we meet, I'll put a bullet in you. Do you meet my terms? No. Then tumble out of here, my lad. Hand over hand, on the double. Give me a hand up. Ah, I'd sooner touch carrion. Who'll give me a hand up? Before the hour's up, I'll... Crush your blockhouse like it was a punching. <laughs> Them of you that dies will be lucky. Inside, lads. Clear decks for action. Quarters, all hands. They'll board us in a minute. Now get over that wall first and don't use your muskets only as a last resort. Morgan, you and yours to the larboard. Job, you and yours to the starboard. Now, by the powers, board them. Hey! 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 Here they come, Captain. Fire when they top the wall. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh,
Maloney, sir. You're a man. And you are a captain, sir. Am, you dogfish! Am! Outside, man. Outside and fight him. Cutlasses. the house, lads. They've gone. Fire from cover. You crawling squid. You dogfish. Don't mind me, sir. Watch them. They've turned tail for the moment. I taste him. I don't enjoy, sir. It's dead, sir. I taste him. Captain Smothered with a ball on the shoulder. Oh, yes. God rest, Hunter and Joyce. Amen. How many do they lose? Seven. Huh. They've had their rations for today. Well, that makes them nine against our five, gentlemen. Right. Precious sight more confidence, you said, eh? Yes, sir. Here's Gray. Well, well, Gray. They're all camped down by the swamp, sir. I crept up and heard them. They're like hornets. And Silver's the maddest. It looks like tomorrow will finish us. What's in the wind? They're building rafts, sir, and floating the cannon in from the ship in the morning. Silver says he's going to blow this blockhouse to limbo. That settles it. This bent gun may be our last chance. You sure he's all right in the head? Well, he's rather silly, sir. He told me to nip the squire. Nip me? How? Begging your pardon, sir, like this. <laughs> A lunatic. No harm in finding out. I have two hours before dawn. I'll haunt that clearing all day. It'll take them all day to get the gun ashore. If they turn up again, I'll be with you, gentlemen. Godspeed, Doctor. Good luck, Doctor. What's the Doctor up to? Oh, he thinks this Ben Gunn fella can help us. How's beyond me? Says he, says them, says I, says nothing. We can't hold out against cannon, Smollett? Mm. If we could only get out there and cut that ship adrift, that'll put an end to the cannon, cut off their base of supplies. But we've no boat. They're undoubtedly watching the, the gigs. I know, I know. The doctor's right. Our only chance is this gun fellow. Keep near the house, Jim. Oh, yes, sir. It's just hot in here, sir.
see poor dear Willem be. <laughs> he won't much of a sailor was Willem. Where might you come from? I've come aboard to take possession of this ship, Mr. Hands, and you can regard me as your captain until further notice. <laughs> Well, now, Captain Hawkins, <laughs> and who's to say there without you get the hint from me? Well, I... Now, now, look here. You give me me food and me drink, and a bit of a scarf or a handkerchief to bind up me wound with, and I'll show you how to sail it. Now, that's square all round, ain't it? Done, Mr. Hands. Now, I can't have these colors, Mr. Hands. And by your leave, I'll strike them. Captain Hawkins. Oh. And where might we be a sailing to? Not back to the anchorage, you can be sure. No. I've seen a map of this island. Oh. You know a cove uh. called North Inlet? That I do. It's away north, on the other shore it be. Well, that's where we're sailing to. Oh. I'm going to run her high and dry on the beach, where nobody will be able to find her excepting honest people. Now, does that suit your curiosity, Mr. Hand? Why, Captain Hawkins, under my present unfortunate circumstances, to a plum. Hey, she's headed right now! Right, Captain. Now lash the wheel and come forward for a close haul on the jib. Right! You and me'll have to sign articles, Jim. <laughs> I'd have had you but for that latch there. <laughs> I don't have much luck, not I. It looks like that I'll have to.
Hannity. Well, if it ain't Jim Hawkins. Dropped in sort of friendly like, eh? <laughs> what have you done with my friends? Have you killed them? Oh, no. Blood spilling's all over, Jim. We signed a treaty, Jim. Treaty? What kind of a treaty? Well, we give them their freedom out of here in return for half of their provisions. But, but where did they go? Oh, they just wandered away. But if you're a mind of hunting them up, why, you just save your time, Jim, because they don't want to have nothing to do with you. You're lying. No, Jim. Why, the squire told me right to my face that you was a deserter, and the doctor... Oh, the doctor said that you was scared. But they couldn't think that. They wouldn't. Not after... Na Naturally, I, I've always wanted you to join up with us and take your share. Now it looks like you'll have to. Well, supposing I said no. <laughs> well... Even if you do get the treasure, your ship's lost, your men lost, your whole business gone to wreck. And if you want to know who did it, it was I. You, Jim? I was in the apple barrel that night and heard you. It was I who cut the ship's hawser and killed those two aboard her. And it was I who took her where you'll never see her again, none of you. So kill me if you want, but the laugh's on my side, and I'll die laughing at the lot of you. I believe you would, matey. It was him who faked the map from Billy Bones. First and last, we've been fouled by him. Here he goes. Oh, last, sir. Be you captain here, Morgan? Tom's right. I'm the captain. I say what's right. I'll be hanged if I'll be hazed by you, John. You sir. want to have it off with me? That's better, George Mary. Why, this boy's got more fight in him than the whole of you. I like this boy. And if you understand King George's English, you better not lay a hand on him. Well, you makes a hash of this cruise. You're a bold man to say no to that. And second, there's that boy. He's earned a proper killing. And in the third place, you wouldn't let us attack them all and they on the march. And fourth, you let the enemy out of this trap for nothing. Oh, we get the stores and the powder, but we didn't get the map, did we? And what do we want here except for the map? I'd like to know. Yes, I I I so, George. By thunder, it's it. Look, JF, French initials, with a score below and a clovis as the old was signed. Good old That's silver. Long John forever. Aye, silver. Hurrah for silver. Good old John. Good old Good old John. Where'd you get the map? From Dr. Livesey, matey. You couldn't have gotten it unless you killed him. Oh, no. That's part of the bargain, matey. They get their freedom and we get the treasure. Will you uh, join me in a bit of fresh air, matey? There's so much stupidity in here that I can't breathe properly. Come on. Guess that ends everything now that you've got the map. No, matey. You still got a chance for a share. No, I thank you. But I want you to know I'm grateful for you defending me. Now I best go and hunt up my friends. Goodbye. Here, you better stay here for a spell. Maybe the squire and the doctor have had a little change of heart about you. Well, yes, but... Well, I might need you for a hostage. Come on, sit down. A hostage? What do you need a hostage for? You said you'd made a treaty. Well, treaties are only good until you find a chance to break them, matey. That isn't very honorable. Mm, it's smart, Jim. You see what being honorable done for me? I had to show them the map, didn't I? Why were you keeping it from them? Mm, there's too many of them to share the treasure with. I just trying to figure a way to get rid of about half of them. Oh, I see. More murder. Oh, no, not murder. Tactics. I recall taking a prize ship off of Piru once, and there was too many of them to share the treasure with. So Flint and me, we wait till all hands are asleep. I don't wish to hear about it. All right, Jim. Well, what did you do with them? Flint, he has a little hammer. So we go around to all the bunks and we get in back of the men and then we... Oh, uh, never mind. I don't wish to hear about it. Oh, all right. It ain't important. We only disposed of 13 men. Black House, ahoy! What about it?
that, Silver? Have you seen anything of Jim Hawkins? Why? Here I am, Dr. Lipsy. Thank heaven you're safe, lad. Let me talk with him, Silver. No, by the powers. They'll pull a trick. Ouch, please. I'll be telling you for the last time, George Mary. You drop his arm. You give me your word of honor that you won't slip your cable, Jim? Well, I do. All right, then we'll we'll go down and have a yarn with a good doctor. Dr. Lipsy, where did you all go? Why did you give up to them? All I can tell you now, Jim, is that we're safe and sound. But where did you go, lad? We searched everywhere. Oh, then you didn't think I had deserted you, sir, and that I was scared? Oh, <laughs> not a thought of it, lad. Oh, you said that I said I was scared, that they didn't want me. Well, matey, uh, I thought it would be easier for you to join up that way. Oh, I didn't join, sir. Truly, I didn't. But where did you go, Jim? What, what? I ran away to cut the ship's hawser like Captain Smollett wanted. And I have her beached at North Inlet now, sir. North Inlet, eh? Uh... Float her and get her away from here. Don't mind about me. One bunch your hand, Silver, and I fire. Quick now, quick, Jim. Whip over the wall and run for it. Uh, oh, no, sir. I, I passed my word. What's your word to these scoundrels? Quick. Head for cover. Sir, with my word of honor, no matter who it's to, I can't break it. A lad of honor. I counted on that, sir. Jim, we won't leave this island without you. My word on that. You're going for the treasure now, eh? There will we be going. Well, mark you, Silver. When you find it, prepare for squalls. And if Jim Hawkins here is so much as scratched, there'll be a ball between your eyes that nobody will bother to remove. Walls are matey. Am I off my course and sitting on a water spout? I'd almost wager. East, south east, two points east. I thought so. Just as the chart says. Why, that's one of the six brave lads that Flint killed and laid their bones right in a line with the treasure. There's five more of them ahead between us and the doubloons. Forward. Hockey. See my jelly, I've heard Fred call it Darby a hundred times. Fred after all! Them was his last words above board. I've fixed it. I'm done. Where might I hear that voice afore? Nobody but us on this island knows them words. That's Flint's spirit. Nothing but flesh and blood can talk. I was never feared of Flint alive and ain't scared to face him dead. Come on if you're coming. That'd be mates, right in the clear in there. That is mates all together. Hi! Why, there's nothing there at all. Nothing, Jim. We've been out sail. Here, Jim. Take that and stand by for trouble. Two guineas. That's just 700,000 pounds, is it? Why don't you dig a little bit deeper, lads? Maybe you'll find radishes and turnip. It's only an old cripple and a boy. Let's settle it. I have it. Let him have it. We thought we'd be useful, Jim. Look, sir, there's no treasure at all. We've come all this way and everybody's been killed for nothing. Upon my word, sir, I don't understand it. Well, don't try, Jim. We'll go up to Ben Gunn's cave. Maybe old Ben's got another trick in his beard. Beard? Cave? Upon my word, sir. <laughs> Thank you kindly, Doctor, and quite a squall it were. <laughs> By the powers, that voice. 
So it be you, Ben Gunn. How do you do, Mr. Silva? Pretty well, I thank you, thank you. <laughs> ben, Ben, to think as you've done me. Greg, lead the way with Jim. March, Silva. You'll find us how you've been done by everybody. <laughs> Got enough action, my lad? No, thank you. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Why, bless my soul! But, bless me. Upon my soul! How did it all get here? <laughs> All found and carried up here with my own hands, says I. Very thoughtful, says you. <laughs> and you can be full of cheese from now on, says I. Yes, says you. <laughs> yes, says I. <laughs> hmm. Be it all here, Ben Gunn? You don't be holding out any on us now, be you? Uh, Mr. Silver, says I. Silver, my eyes. Well, Captain, I reports back to duty. Me and Jim played a powerful trick on him. <laughs> now that we all have the treasure, why, we're all one big happy family. We've and got the treasure. We. Hmm. You're going back to stand trial in England for mutiny and murder, my man. Look, Jim, rubies with fire in them. Them's pretty harsh measures. Pretty strong medicine, Captain, for just a little infraction of the rule. Not nearly so harsh or strong as the rope I hope to see you hanging from at execution dock. You're under arrest, Silver. Here's for now, you hide! Don't leave me! Don't leave me! I'll stay in trial! We'll starve! We'll starve! You had your chance, my friends. We'll pick up a new crew at Jamaica. Did the frigate answer our signal? She says, come aboard. Hampton commanding. Good. Ben Gunn, stay alert now. We want no strange craft alongside. Hi, sir. Ah, a British ship of the line. And tomorrow we may have the pleasure of seeing Silver hanging to a yard arm. Jim, do you come to take old John a law for a breather? No, I, I fetched you this instead. Thank you, matey. But I ain't much for spirits. Well, I thought you might like to start and drink a lot of it. Why? Well, doesn't everybody, I mean, before they're hanged? Hanged? Matey? They all went over to a frigate that's lying here, and they're not going to wait till we get back to England. Captain says we can hold a naval trial tomorrow, and the squire says we can see you swinging from her yard arm. That ain't just exactly a breather, be it, Jim. I'm sorry. Truly, I am. You say they all went over? No, they left Ben Gunn on watch. Well, 
Well, Jim, I guess you'll have to stand on deck and watch me swing. I can't bear the thought of it. Of you, of anybody. Oh, we won't think about that, Jim. You just dies and that's that. Quite often, though, not as quick as people think, Jim. Well, why not? Well, you take my case as it were. Now, there I'll be, way out on that yard arm, way out there with a, with a rope around my neck, and then they gives the orders to jump. And when the average man jumps and reaches the end of that rope, snaps his head around, way, way around like that. That's the average man. But of course, with me, it's it's a little bit different with my one leg. You see, I'd be kind of off balance, and if they didn't get that noose just right, right there, why, I'd probably just uh, slowly strangle and choke, and, uh, just so I didn't swallow my tongue. But that very rarely happens, Jim, swallowing the tongue. Stop! Oh. Stop! There. I don't know how you get by Ben Gunn, but you're free from here at least. Ah, uh, that's my matey. <laughs> if ever the day comes that I can help you, why, I'm, I'm going to... <laughs> What's the matter? I guess, guess you'll have to help me up, matey. Jim, it's my rheumatism. This place is damp in here. No, no, no. I'm ticklish under my arm. <laughs> Thank you, matey. Thank you. Uh, where's Ben Gunn? Sitting up by the mizzen mast on guard. You run aft and get me a pistol. No, there'll be no blood spilled in this. Oh, no, not for Ben Gunn. Why, I can talk with Ben. He and me are old shipmates. Just for protection on shore, you know. It's a wild place, Jamaica. Oh, all right. You mustn't. Oh, now, ain't that terrible? He's left a guard a ship, and there he lays in a drunken stupor. But he's an awful large bump on his head. Well, he must have got that when he fell off of there and hit the deck with his head. Ain't that too bad? Well, matey, what old Long John's got to tell you, he don't know how to say it. I don't mean that you'll be forgiving me all the bad things that I've done, but just for the mateys that we might have been. You, you won't be a pirate anymore, will you? Or you won't steal? No, sir. From now on, my course is going to be a straight, honest one. So help me. Why shiver my timbers, I... Well, now I'm, I'm glad that happened, lady. 
That's just what I was trying to tell you, and I didn't know how. I cut through the bulkhead and into where the treasure was and took out just one sack of gold. But you promised you wouldn't. Well, I took that before I promised. But it's off my conscience now, and the Lord knows my conscience won't stand anymore, matey. Well, here, you may need it. No, 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 thanks. But you, you have to buy food. Oh, that's, that's all right, Jim. I'll get along all right. All right. Well, maybe. Here. Feed her good. And put her, you put her down below decks when any women around, huh? I will. I promise I will. Oh, believe that. Don't do that. Our courses will cross again sometime. Now, looky, looky now. Now, you didn't get all of that bar silver on that island, now, did you? Well, well who knows? Maybe someday you'll have a great big ship, bigger than this one, and you'll go down there and get the rest of that treasure, now, won't you? And uh, you might be needing a mate or a captain, huh? I guess so. All right. And who do you think would come hobbling along for that berth but old Long John Silver? It'd be honest Long John then. And together, we'd go down there and dig up that treasure and we'd scour all the seas for all the treasures on those islands. Goats and fight camel. It's true, matey. Certain we will. <laughs> <laughs> 